everybody. Okay. If you are on the Wang Transcend page, it means that you are very special. You have decided to go deep. Today is our Tuesday meeting. This is Wow Transcend. Uh, on this page, uh, we just serve you because uh, we truly believe that uh, there is a raiment, if you want to call it, that uh, can be transformed, can be changed, who are ready to receive the new wine. Uh, they are the people who are in the new. They are not of the old wine skin. They can handle uh, the new revelations that God is releasing upon the earth because as you can see, the whole world is shaking. Uh, every financial system, every medical system, every political system, you name it, it's shaking. Uh, if you want to last 2021, it's, uh, it's going to take a new uh, paradigm, it's going to take a new uh, dimension, it's going to new, take a new realization. I don't think a lot of people understand that word, it's a powerful word. When you say you have realized something means you have made that thing real. Okay, so uh, it's not like previously, you know, you could, we can't uh, just do religion, man. I'm fed up of religion, I'm doing this uh, simply because I want uh, the body of Christ uh, to, to mature up and therefore uh, we speak what we speak, we do what we do uh, because we are really believing that the body of Christ uh, uh, will mature up and when they mature up they will have the authority that Christ came to give them. So if you're coming, if you're watching me uh, on this page, it means that I believe in you, okay? Then that takes a lot, okay? That means I believe that you uh, can be on this page, that you are ready to be an adept. I don't know whether you understand what adept means. Adept means you, you are ready to be a professional at what we do. Uh, religion is for the masters, but this type of oral tradition uh, is for the disciples, the ones who are ready to uh, go deep and, uh, and have the capacity to make a change, okay? So that's why I keep telling you if you're on Bow Transcend, then you are ready to make a change. You are not a victim, you are not looking for help, you are the help. You understand that? You are not looking for uh, something to come and help you uh, because you are victimized and you don't have. If you are on this page, I consider you as someone who is willing to be that person who has the overflow. And um, uh, that's, that's why you are on this page. Wow Transcend is specially for you. That means you can go deep, you can go into the scriptures, you can understand this word. Okay, so let's go deep today. Uh, Tomorrow, I start a fast, okay? I start a five-day fast. Uh, uh, I, uh, I'll be giving details on the Wow Transcend page for those who've done 5DP on the 5DP page and on my Happy Breatharian page. I'll be speaking to you guys and giving you uh, updates and also uh, giving you my insight in these five days. It's going to be awesome. We're going to do it together. There's going to be shift. There's going to be transcendence. Okay, guys, let's see, who, let's see who's here. Okay, right. Hi Dilki. Hi Oneda. Okay. Hey Julius. Okay. Hey Surakshi. Good to have you here. Hey Francesco. Okay. Are you guys ready? Let's do this. Braun Braun. Okay. Yes. That's right. Come on. Right. So we've been speaking about uh, the Sabbath and the Sabbath rest, the mystical nature of it, why it was given to man. Uh, God says, Jesus says that the Sabbath was made for man. Why? Why was the Sabbath made for man? Not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. There's a reason for that because I'm going to show you, I'm going to take you to the Old Testament and show you the first chapter of Genesis uh, like you probably never seen before. Okay? I've never heard anyone preach it before. So I've not heard it before either till I heard it from the Lord. Now, just hear this. Okay? This chapter 1 is very, very important to understand. Now, you see... When you read chapter 1 in Genesis, if you get to chapter 2 and you don't, you're not uh, an ardent reader or an, a, a lover of the word, uh, you, you would miss it. That chapter 2 is completely telling a different story. Chapter 1 is telling one story. Chapter 2 is telling a different story. Chapter 1 says that he created man in his image. Chapter 2 says that there was no man to till the ground. C complete contradiction. So, but it is not a contradiction because you have to understand the full nature of God. You need to be able to understand the deepness of Jesus constantly telling and reminding the woman at the well, even God is, the Father is spirit. So once you understand the characteristics of God, once you understand his nature, you understand that God's nature is spirit. So, and then your nature, your half nature is spirit or your full nature is spirit and another full nature is man. So 
God is the same. He is spirit and then Jesus is man. So there is Father, Son, Spirit. Okay? The spirit is the, the, the binding between the two. He, the spirit is the, uh, the intermediary, I like to call it. He is the connection between the two. Okay? So the, what, what uh, interacts between me and the Father is spirit. What interacts between uh, the heavenly realm and myself as a biology, as an Adam, okay, if you want to call it, uh, is spirit. Okay, so in spirit, in the time, in, 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 in pure spirit, in the glory of the spirit, there is no time and there is no space. Okay, so that is called kairos. The word kairos means it, it's a place where there is no time and space. It's an eternal realm. And that's why Jesus, God is called the eternal one. When you come down to the earth realm, it's called chronos. That's why chronologically, the chronological time. Okay, so Chapter 1, where, although he says, let us make man in uh, our image, right there, you need to get it. What is God's image? Spirit. So once you understood that, then it's like, ha, huh, okay, let us make man in our image. He's talking about the spirit because Jesus tells the woman at the well, the father is spirit. Remember? Okay, so that means when God is telling the Elohims, which are... I believe the uh, Elohim doesn't mean God. God is literally saying, telling the Elohims, let us make man. So therefore, there are Elohims. And the Bible says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God. Now in John 1, it explains this story saying in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God. So in that Word there, the, the Hebrews understood the Word, the beginning was the Word to be, the, the, the Hebrews understood it as not only just the revelation, of course the word means revelation, but it just doesn't mean revelation, it means the alphabet. Okay, the word alphabet comes from Hebrew, okay, which, which is the living letters of God. Okay, so, so like I said, there's my friend Greg Ordway who teaches about living letters, it's on the Wow Transcend page, listen to it, so it explains it a, a lot better. So in the beginning, word is being, that every letter in the Hebrew alphabet is a living being, it's a being that you can engage with, it's alive, okay, yeah, and that's why on the mountain, when God calls all the people again, in the times of Egypt, he's about to give them the living letters again, the living oracles, but they refuse the living oracles, they live they refuse the living letters, okay? So you have to understand, so these Elohims are beings, okay? They can be the living letters, they're different types of beings, they're Elohims, okay? Different godlings. They can be the alphabets, they can be different, different powers. And in the seven days, they start creating, 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 okay? And so therefore, all that we are talking about in the seven days, from the mountains to the seas, to the trees, to the everything, was in the realm of the Elohims. Okay, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. All things were created by the Word of God. Isn't that what John 1 says? So that means it's still in that form, in the realm of the Spirit. And so, then you get to, if you look at chapters, if you, you look at the, the six days of creation, and you realize it was nothing to do with the earth. It was to do with the realm of the Spirit. And when you see that, then you can understand these words, because God qualifies it now. And he looked at all his creation that was created in the spirit, okay? Everything that was created in the spirit, and he looked at that realm in the spirit, okay? Everything that was created there, and said that that was good. And it was, in fact, very good. Wow. Hmm. What was very good? Everything that was created in the realm of the spirit. The, in that realm, in the elementary realm of the spirit, Okay, there are certain elements there. He brings in, if you look at, in the beginning, is the tohu wa bohu. That means there was absolute void. There was nothingness. Okay, God who is pure light creates nothingness. And there was deep darkness. So he gives the Sabbath. He starts off with the Sabbath, the stillness. And created from the tohu wa bohu, which means simple stillness, the, great, the deep void, the expanse, the heavens created the water. And then he says, then the, the wind came, then the fire came, right? That's what it says there. And then the earth came, and you see the elements, the recipe of creation, and then suddenly the, 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 the living letters, or, the, or the, uh, even the Elohim, or whatever you want to call it, you can have multiple interpretations, it doesn't matter. Be comfortable with multiple interpretations. And so these different beings started creating with God on the orders of God, okay? Now, once we created this thing in the realm of the spirit, then God looks at all this stuff and says, wow, this is just awesome. But now, there's something missing. What is missing? We need to bring it into the earth realm. That's what's missing. We need to bring it into the earth realm. 
So that's what, now listen carefully. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And I said, ah, no, 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 it could be that we finished. No, no, no. Still, it's, in, it's finished in the realm of the spirit. Like, for instance, if I tell you, uh, let's bake a cake uh, tomorrow, uh, I'm on the earth. But it's still not manifested on the earth fully. I have to bring it out of the ground. Do you understand that? But it's on the earth. Where is it? It's in the mind of God. So that's what you need to understand. That's why if you look at the narrative of the Bible, it says that Jesus was there in the beginning and it was through him and for him that he created everything. Jesus was, cre what was with him in the beginning. That's what this Bible says. I can't go into every verse. Everything was created by Christ. Now, Christ was not a man. Okay, Jesus in John 17 says, Father, give me the same glory that I had with you before the foundations of the world. That means Jesus was not in a man. He was in word form. He was in revelation form. He was not in man form. Okay, so you have to understand this. So it was in the mind of God, in the mind of Christ, all these things. Even heaven is in the sun, in the mind. That's what the Bible says. So it was in him, okay, still, but not manifested on the earth. It's just like you can have a thought, but it's still not come. You want to do a job, but it has still not come. Where is it? It's in the earth realm. It's in the mind realm, but it's not in the manifested realm. Now watch this. Why am I telling you this? Because it explains it here well. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. And this is good here in, in, in verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done. Now look how many times they explain this. On the seventh day, why are they explaining it like this? On the seventh day, God ended his work. Look how many times the word qualifies his there. One sentence, how many his, his, his is there in one sentence? Watch this, okay? And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had done, and he, rest, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. How many times? Five times? I think it's five. Am I correct? Is it five times? I think, yeah. Okay, one sentence. It's like... I'm trying to tell you something. Uh, Jude and them do all this TV stuff here. Like they're all here. You can't see them, okay? Now they're all here. And so they have now rested from their work that they did, that they have planned, and that they do. Who? Media team. That's why so many times I say, now it's my turn. You see? They're, they're passing the ball. So his work is what has ended. The spirit. The spirit. And so once you understand how many times it is his, his work, he has done, he has rested, he, okay, then God blessed the seven days, sanctified it, and because he rested from all his work that he did, that he created, and that he made. He created, he made. Spirit. Why? Because it's now time for God to take, and that's why, has anyone asked the question? This is a profound question, okay? Someone should ask these questions, man, I'll tell you. Has anyone asked the question, why didn't God call the first man Kirby? It's a good name. It's a really good name. It means God from the church. Huh? Why didn't anyone ask him, but God, why did he call him Adam? Because he's trying to tell you something. What does Adam mean? From the ground. Ha! Huh. From the earth. From the soil. That's what it means. Now you understand. Oh, so it's not spirit. Now God has rested from the spirit, and now everything's going to happen from Adam, from the ground. That's the difference. So now, still, there's no, he, he has created man, and he says man was created in, on, this, on the sixth day, both male and female. So this spiritual being that has not manifested on earth is both male and female. So you must understand that. It's both male and female. The spiritual being is both male and female female. Okay, this is important to get, because if we don't understand that, that means he's not manifested on the earth. If he had manifested on the earth, the church would have gone on strike and, uh, uh, I mean, uh, gone political on him. As you can see, that what they're doing. Because this being is both male and female. <laughs> they call that something now. I'm not being funny. I'm being very serious. You see? Now, but it has not manifested. So when he manifested, now he's going to bring it apart. It's not manifested. It's not birth of the ground. So then, now God has rested from the spiritual. Why? Because he has a plan through the natural, which is called Adam. 
So God now, then he takes, watch this, this is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created and the days of the Lord, God made the heavens and the earth. Now watch this, in the day of the Lord, God made the heavens and the earth. Now listen carefully. Before any plant, now he's explaining it. This is before any plant. He's talking of all this heaven and the earth thing that we were talking about, he's saying, is before, so he's saying that realm, in fact, uh, if you understand the realm of the mind, if I tell you, when in the New Testament, just for you to, call, to qualify it, if you say flesh, what does flesh mean? Oh, they think, oh, flesh means body. No, no, flesh doesn't mean body. Flesh means the mind and the body. Just get that, okay? So, when he says earth here, it also encompasses the mind. You have to understand the mind of man, okay? The mind of God. Now, so, understanding that, we see that before any plant of the field was in the earth and before any herb of the field had grown from, from the ground. For the, God, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth and there was no man to till the ground. Wow, okay? So, still, there was no plants, no herbs, nothing on the earth. We are on the seventh day, ladies and gentlemen. This is so important. So, God had ceased, and the word rested there means he had ceased from the spiritual work. Why? Because he's about to now create the natural work, which is still the work of God. Okay? And that is why he says he created the Sabbath for man. So, man, so he created the spiritual man. Then he created the Sabbath, and then he pulled man out of the ground. So he said, there was no man to till the ground. And then it says this, and, and then it says this, and the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground. Wow. You see, Adam. So he's trying to explain to you, you are the natural work. He is the spiritual work. So he takes the spirit. He says he takes now the spirit, and he breathes the spirit into man. Because all that was spirit. That whole DNA of the creation the, the DNA of the creator itself is breathed in now to Adam, the dust of the earth, which means the dust of the earth. And it infuses that eternal, that's why it says eternity is placed in man's heart. That is God. The Kairos realm is placed in man's heart. Okay. Now, man became a living being. Okay. Uh, he didn't become a life-giving spirit. He was planned for a life-giving spirit. He became a living being. That means suddenly the dust of the earth. And then... I, I love this, and then he goes on to say, I keep explaining this, verse, verse 19, out of the ground Lord God made a form, out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, huh? every bird of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them, and whatever Adam called them, each living creature, that was its character and its name. Wow. Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds, all this, and he gave, explained that if you understand what he's trying to say is, Adam created the animals and everything else. That's what your Bible says. So, God made it in the realm of the spirit, created the Sabbath, created man, okay, infused into man his spirit from the realm of the spirit because God had ceased from his work, the spiritual now. Now it's the natural. Now the spiritual meets the natural on the seventh day. The spiritual meets the natural on the seventh day. The seventh day is where the spiritual needs to meet the natural. It's the elixir that makes, it gives you, it, it gives everything else life. Without, without Sabbath, everything will get destroyed. Okay? So he makes him on the Sabbath, and on the Sabbath day, he causes him now through that eternal spirit that he has in him. Eternity now is set in his heart. He starts bringing character, okay, from the dust of the ground. Adam means from the ground. He has the power from the ground to create everything. He just blows into it, just like God did, and it happens. What I'm doing now, these words are just gibberish. They're called English. They're very limited. It doesn't matter. These words, okay, as I'm doing this right now, I can be talking Tamil, I can be talking whatever, Russian, okay? These are the words that create. Why? Because it's not the syllables of the word. It's the breath. Every time I speak, I breathe. Every time I need to speak again, I need to refresh myself. And then I speak again. I speak again. Refresh myself. Very important verse. The Bible says that the Sabbath is a refreshing. And the word refreshing there it means a deep breath. Anyway, that's completely for next, another Tuesday. Okay? But 
It means the Sabbath is the refreshing. It means It means the deep breath of God. Okay? So every time I speak, what I'm doing is I'm creating, okay, out of, not out of words, out of breath. Okay? It's holding the electromagnet, the power to give life. Now, once you understand this, Adam created everything else through the spirit, through his breath. Yeah. And so it says, whatever Adam called it, it became. So he had, he had the elements, water, fire, wind, hmm, earth, expanse. Those are, the four, those are the five elements right in Genesis. I'm going to tell you very soon, one day I'm going to do a whole series on why you need to be baptized by the elements. When it says be baptized by water, you'll understand what it means. It doesn't mean really just to be baptized. Baptized by fire. See, it's all fell into the ground. Baptized by earth. Elements. Okay? People are like the wind. Baptized by the wind. Huh? So, you'll understand that those, we need to get back into the recipe of how to create. It's deeply mystical. And so, now Adam was given the elements, and Adam, the ground man, could now create whatever he wants from the ground. And like I said before, Elon Musk is planning to mine Mars. Very soon, we'll travel to New York in less than two hours. Okay? Do you, do you understand the technology that is coming on the earth? How? Because man is creating from the dust of the ground. He's still creating. His breath is still creating. Why? He's made in the very image. What is that image? Spirit. And then he takes dust and then he creates. This is the way we create the world. Why am I saying this? Because we are called to create. Everything you have in life today has been created out of the abundance or the lack of your heart. Everything you have today has either been created by the abundance of your heart or the lack of your heart. Okay? And the words thereby. Okay? Words means or the breath thereby. You, you have abundance in your heart and you breathe, you'll create abundance. You have lack in your heart and you breathe, you'll create lack. You have greed in your heart and you breathe, you'll create things that are destroyed. You have a mindset of abundance in your heart and you create, it will multiply. Okay? Understanding that, let me give you the story. Okay? You see, when they were in the wilderness again, God takes the man, people out of the bondage of patterns and creating. Okay? They were creating all kinds of things at that time in Egypt. They were slaves. Okay? They were under the patterns of man and they've got patented according to uh, Egypt, bondage, okay, the pyramid system. I want you to understand, Egypt represents the pyramid system. What is the pyramid system? You've got to trample everyone else to get to the top. There's very little room on the top, the pyramid, okay? So they were the least of the food chain. The pharaohs were the top of the food chain, okay? So they were the least of it. Now God wants them to climb up a mountain. Do you understand that? That means he wanted them to be on top again. But the way he wanted them to be on top, he said, I want all of you to be on top. So it's the upside down pyramid system. I'm just trying to show you how I see this, okay? It's an upside down system. He, that means what is special is plentiful, not the other way around. In the world, what is special is very rare. Did you just get that? But God is going to turn this upside down, like for Solomon. He says, in Solomon's kingdom, the silver was like the gravel in the ground. Why? Because he's coming from an abundant mindset. It's an abundant mindset. It all depends on your heart. So they're coming from a place where they're striving and working and for everything that they have. Okay? And so he reminds them of the sign. He calls the Sabbath the sign between you and me. Read it so many times in the Bible. He says this is a sign between you and me that you are my people. The difference between the natural man and the spiritual man is the Sabbath. I'm going to say it again. The difference between the natural man and the spiritual man, the sign, is the Sabbath. The people of God are at rest. The people who really have power are very restful. They are not panicked. They are in the stillness. They found a stillness in the chaos. The whole world can be crumbling, but they have found a state of meditation a state of contemplation, a state of being a witness, watching. Do you understand that? So that is the difference between the spiritual and the natural. And God is asking us to enter into that rest. In fact, he says, strive, work 
to enter into that rest. There's one work you need to do is to enter into that peace, the shalom. Now, very interestingly, they're taken out of Egypt and God wants to institute the Sabbath back to them. Maybe they had forgotten it, maybe they didn't understand it, okay? He wanted to institute the Sabbath. So how he does it was, he provides them food. Knowing full well that they're orphans, knowing full well that they're slaves. Now he knows that about you and me as well. And so he provides them food and he watches them trying to take this and they're looking for food and it's like a wafer, it's like nothing on the ground. Like, and they say, what is this? So for six days, he gives them a promise. Man, some, it's maybe something like your promise that you have received, you're collecting wafers on the ground at the moment. I've been there. You're collecting wafers from the ground at the moment. And you're collecting wafers and like, it's like frost because God has promised, but it's manifesting like nothing. In fact, it's like, what is this? Okay, it's the, what Adam was given was, what is this? No, what it will be is anything you call it. That's why Adam was taken from the, from the ground and he was given something. And he said, here's elephant, but it's not really elephant, it's something. It's, what is it? And then whatever Adam, out of the abundance of his heart, whatever he called it, it became. If he said elephant, it became elephant. Do you understand that? I'm just trying to show you the primordial understanding of it, but I'm sure Adam wasn't primordial. Trust me, they were building the technology, if you see in Genesis, is mind-blowing, far greater than what we have today. Okay? He wasn't primordial. He wasn't wearing um, like uh, furs and uh, little, tied himself up in loincloths. That wasn't Adam. Okay? Now, but I want you to understand that whatever he called it, he, like, it he, could, he could manifest things very fast. The gestation period was so fast. He didn't have to wait nine months to have babies. That was only after the fall. You understand that that, 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 that period came. It would happen as he's called it. It just creates. Man, isn't that cool to have that kind of power? So now the promise was given, I'm going to give you food, you want food, but I'm going to give it to you, but it's going to be, what is it? It's going to be like frost in the ground. They looked at it like, what the heck is this? And they realized that when they took it, no matter what it was, according to their heart, it started morphing according to heart. If they collected too much, it was just enough. If they collected too less, it was just enough as well. And they started realizing this, what is this? The elixir, okay? This thing moved according to the heart space. And then, some people started collecting too much and it would rot. Man, just think about that. Because they were collecting out of the wrong heart space. They were collecting out of the bondage that they had come from. They, not, they still remained as slaves in Egypt. Man, I meet people like that all the time. They still remain slaves in Egypt. They're still orphaned. They're still fighting for every crumb. Like, give me this crumb, give me a crumb. No, I don't want it. I'm going to take this. They're still doing that. That's why the woman was just awesome. The Syrophoenician, when she says, La, what is the crumb? I, I don't give a crumb to dogs. She's like, man, a crumb is heaven to me. Don't worry about a crumb. I'm okay with one little wafer. I will be sustained for a year. See, for in God's economy, it works different. One is a thousand. One year, one day is a thousand years. Two will chase five thousand. Look, you, do you understand the economy? It's completely different. The math is come. He says, can the, can the earth be born, can a nation be born in a day? I went from one church to 600 churches in nine months, in one gestation period of someone having one baby, maximum they can have 20, I think, I don't know, 20 babies, some point I had. I went from one to 600 in nine months. Why? Because the economy of God, one is the economy of mammon, you're counting and you know, taking everything and every penny and you know, all this kind of stuff, okay? And that doesn't last, it's greed, it will just go away. It, it, worms will eat it. Okay? Do you get it? Worms will eat it. And that, I'll tell you, there is something about time, and when you say time, time is space. The natural man exchanges time for space. Time for space. He sacrifices time for space. When you're supposed to infuse time with eternity. How do you do that? I did that before I came. I had only six minutes, or I had uh, four minutes, uh, six minutes. Yeah, six minutes to read the Bible, uh, ch change, and come down. And I, I've shown this few as well. I can, on very small doses, and uh, one, sometimes it increases fully, but I can, I can stretch out one minute, can be someone's, like at least someone's 15, 20 minutes. Without, and I'm, I, I can demonstrate it. Okay, that means your time and your, my time is completely different. We have companies, 
We have 600 churches. We have the largest Bible school. We have all these things. I have time to get a revelation. I meditate uh, uh, two, three, four hours a day. I pray four, five hours a day. I uh, uh, work out uh, at least one hour a day, and I do all that. But, like, but how do you do it? You can't fit it in 24 hours. How do you fit it in 24 hours? You can't, because it's not man's time. It's kairos. It's a, it's a infusing eternity into the Kronos realm. Man, I'm talking of immortality here. I'm literally talking of immortality. I'm telling you, you know, we preach this kind of stuff a lot, you know, but you have to have a practical hold on it. And I'm coming to a place, I'm going to do it very soon. 2022, I'm going to call it Christian Mystery School. Okay, I'm going to call it Christian Mystery School. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's, it's, you can do this kind of stuff, but you have to first get the revelation of it. If you apply greed to things, it gets quickened very, very fast. I learned it with roller coasters. You know, Fiona used to take me on roller coasters. I hate. I used to, I used to hate roller coasters because because I used to get. I don't know because I was I was a bit scared. Okay, uh, and um, no, Fiona loves roller coasters, but I think for her it goes very fast because she's like ah down the roller coaster like that. And I thought when I'm going to go a roller coaster, <laughs> when I go to get going to a roller coaster. I thought, okay, if I'm going there, I am not going to scream, I'm not going to shout, I'm going to enjoy it, and I want to slow it down. And so if you see me in a roller coaster, I'm in like a zen state, you know? Why? Because I want to, and so now in a roller coaster, I realize, oh, it's just one, two minutes, but I can look all around, and I can enjoy everything around me, and I can look at all the people screaming and shouting and all that, you see? <laughs> Why? Because there is a way that you can change and shift the way time responds to you. If you if you have greed on time, okay, and if you reach out to touch, feel, and see, like how Adam did with that kind of mentality to control, time will be like sand in your hand and it'll run out. But if you watch the rhythm of grace, it'll increase. And why I'm saying that is very important because if you look at what happened to the manna, they collected, 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 it was rotting, but then he gave them the seventh day, the Sabbath, to remind them of that God rested on the seventh day. And when they put the elixir of the Sabbath, the, the wonderful timelessness of the Sabbath, the stillness of the Sabbath, when they mixed it with that food, it became like coriander seed. And that's when they called it manna, okay, which was like coriander seed. That means it became a staple meal only when they could Staple means it's a, a permanent thing, okay? Only when they mix the Sabbath with it. And they realize that on the Sabbath, it produced a double. Wow. That means your little bit of time, your one minute can be at least two minutes for someone else. Did you just get that? Your, but the Bible says one is like a thousand. Wow. So in that timelessness, if you apply it, something shifts. I can tell you it, it shifts. Things change. Time stretches out. Kairos comes into Kronos. Okay? And so they said, Moses, what is going on here? When we collect on the sixth day, it lasts even for the seventh day. We don't mean to collect, but whatever we collect, it doubles. Don't you want to have a life like that? The Sabbath was given as the elixir for multiplication of days, times, money, for health, healing, mind, everything. Stillness. Meditation. Okay? Why am I saying meditation? I'm going to show you. Okay, now, meditate on what? What's the object of your meditation? What was the object of their meditation right here? On the Sabbath, it says God was spirit. Okay, and then he created the Sabbath. And the man was taken out of that Sabbath and he created knowing full well, being baptized in Kairos. He was in timelessness. There was no evening and morning. And then he created. But when he reached out to grab from the tree and he saw with his Five senses. How did you lose the Sabbath? How did you lose the Sabbath? David, how did you lose the Sabbath? You lost the Sabbath when you counted your soldiers. How did you lose your Sabbath? When you applied greed to it. So when they, how did they come out of the Sabbath? The sin was they came out of the Sabbath. So how did they come out of that realm? Is when they saw with their eyes, with their natural eyes, and they said, hey, I can grab, I can hold, I can touch. And when they lost their rest, guess what? Everything started dying. And... The Bible says it. The earth is cursed because of you. Not that he cursed the earth. God never cursed the earth. He says, now because of your greed, the earth now will not respond to you. Now you'll have to apply that same force 
to get it to produce. You'll have to apply the same kind of force, that same greed for it to produce. I mean, it produces also, it'll produce just thistles and it won't produce as much as it's supposed to when you had eternity placed in your heart. Come on, okay? I hope you're getting all this. This is really good stuff. And that's why I want you to go to John 6 and that's why it explains it here. How is it? How's it going? Yeah, good? John 6, okay? Hope you guys are doing well. This is good. This is very, very good stuff. It's very deeply mystical. And there's so many stuff that I want to teach you guys, but we still can't go in there. We, we need to have the, the foundational revelations to be able to practically understand and be able to do this stuff. But trust me, just by hearing this and just practicing this stuff, things start shifting and things start changing. Now watch this, seven, okay. Uh, John chapter six. Here we are, John chapter five. Jesus heals a man. I'm just going to do the narrative. You can't suddenly take chapter by chapter. You have to understand the story. John chapter five, Jesus heals a man on the Sabbath. And they go and persecute him for healing a man on the Sabbath. He says in John chapter 5, my father worked until, there, until now and I will also work. That means he's saying that on the seventh day, God himself worked and created the Sabbath and created man. So he's disputing the Sabbath that the Pharisees of that day were trying to express. I am disputing the Sabbath the Pharisees of this day are trying to express. Okay? Same thing. He says, no, my father worked. What are you talking about? I don't see him rest. Where do you see him rest? In what part of the Bible do you see him rest? Oh, he rests from the spiritual work. Oh, that, that work. But he created man now to do his work. The Sabbath was created, he created, and he rested on the seventh day. He didn't rest on the sixth day. Okay, so I've gone over that clearly for you. Uh, go through my previous teachings. I explained that. Okay, now, so he says, my father worked until now. Now he gets to chapter six. And chapter six, guess what he does? After the healing of the Sabbath, Okay, and he says, my father worked up to now. What does he do? Multiplying of bread. Remember the manna. Don't forget the manna story, okay? So that's very important, okay? Once he does that, he multiplies the bread. Okay, they come and give him uh, two loaves and, a, uh, uh, and, and some fish, and, and then, um, and then you know, five loaves and two fish. Is, it, is that right? Yeah? Five is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, and, 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 and there were 12 baskets left. 12 baskets means for the tribe of Israel. Just understand, they were left over for the tribe of Israel because he remembers the tribe of Israel. He was assigned to them that there is going to be a double, multiplied on you. You will have, not just for yourself, but it will be plentiful, okay? He just does his miracle and they come behind him again. And then he says these things. Now listen carefully to what he says. He says, verse 36 in chapter six, he says, Moses, surely I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and are filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures for everlasting life. Come on, guys. What is he trying to say? He says, the guys who picked food out of their own labor on the sixth day, okay, on the fifth day, on the fourth day, out of their own toil and their labor, guess what it happened? It perished. Worms and moths and rust and thieves and coronavirus came and destroyed it. That's what it says. He says, because it was out of their own strength and their own labor. He says, don't, don't, don't labor for the food that perishes, but labor for the food that endures. And when did it start enduring? On the Sabbath. That's when it multiplied. Okay? And so he says, labor for the food that endures that I will give you. And then, my God, I, if you understand what he's talking about, he's talking about immortality. And then he goes on, why, why am I saying this? Because he will say it here in verse 10. And this is the will of him who sent me. In verse 10, chapter 6. Sorry, verse 40. Verse 40, chapter 6. And this is the will of him who sent me. That everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life. And I will raise him up in the last day. So he says, I am the true bread. If you saw that certain food corrupted, certain elements of the earth corrupted, but when you put eternity into it, it lasted and doubled. That's what he's saying. And he's saying, I am now the true bread, not like the manna. That anyone who eats of me will have lasting life. It will not corrupt. Moths, rust, worms, sickness, disease will not be able to touch you. It's a time of viruses. It will not be able to touch you. Why? Because we've entered the stillness of the Sabbath. 
come on, man. Today, I mean, uh, I mean, I can't tell you the stories. I wish I can tell you on this. But just today, we had to deal with this corona stuff. But um, it freaks people out if, it is that if, if I tell them how many times that I have experienced, met this sickness. So this is on my, uh, on my whatever page. So I can tell you how many times I met this sickness. Okay, and not even th not even got sick. And uh, you can talk about anything. There's not one bit of sickness. And the people we prayed over have completely got healed. And crazy miracles. We can't share it because in Sri Lanka you can't share these miracles. Why can't you share these miracles? Because um, uh, we, uh, people don't don't really get it here. But crazy crazy miracles with this virus. Unafraid, man. We are not afraid of the virus because God can multiply your health. God multiplies your health. That's what he does. But for that, you can't be panicked. You can't be scared. You know what? I've met two people who were really scared of this virus. They'll be laughing and watching me. But both of them, okay, who were scared of the virus, the virus comes after them, man, closest to their house, just right behind them. Why? Because fear will cause a different attraction. Faith will cause a completely different attraction. When they, when they, when they uh, collected the food in fear, guess what? And they didn't put the elixir of stillness on it, it rotted and corrupted. Come on, man. This thing moves according to the heart. <laughs> the thing moves according to the heart, man. That's how this thing works. The thing moves according to the heart. They don't even know. Scientists have not figured it out as yet. Think about it. How did a guy who came from, uh, from England in the cricket team get have the virus. I thought they come checked up. I'm just asking you questions. You know, it's they they not figured the whole thing out. God knows because God has given you who created the virus. I'm not saying it's made in a lab in Wuhan, but I'm saying who created cancer, who created sickness, diabetes, who created who created all these things? Man created. Who can change it? Man can. The day you think that God has come from above to change things. You don't understand this God. He gave man from the earth so that now you create on the earth. We have the right to destroy this thing. We have the right to, to make this thing something else. We have the power to do that. Now, watch this, okay? This is so good. So, chapter 6. Chapter 6 talks about this like that, okay? Talks about that God, Jesus, literally says, don't labor for this food that perishes. You have to apply stillness, the Sabbath. I healed on the Sabbath. My father worked on the Sabbath. You have to apply this. We were created. The son of man had come. So Adam was the son of man. He's the earth. Jesus came as the last Adam. So he says, I will create even now. And I want you to see what the people ask him and listen carefully what they say, okay? This is really interesting stuff. I think it's in chapter 5. Hold on. He says, mm, Father worked on them. He says, we want to do the work of God. I think it's in chapter 6. He says, let, okay. The Father did manna in the desert, and it's written, he gave him bread from heaven. And Jesus said, Moses assuredly, in chapter 32, I said to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of, for the, for the, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Okay, here it is. Okay, listen carefully. Okay, verse 28. Then they turned around and they said to him, when he says, my father works up to now, and he says, do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that gives you everlasting life. He's talking of that multiplication, that, that synergy of the Sabbath, that meditation, that stillness, that elixir that he put on the Sabbath and multiplied. He's talking about that. Okay, so that perished, but what I will create will not perish, he says. Because the, I'm the son of man. Remember, he comes as the last Adam. Look at the question from the Jews, and they say to him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Do you understand that? Remember that we are talking about clearly that in the six days we saw the work of God, and on the seventh day we saw the work of God. God created man and the Sabbath. So that means whenever you have the Spirit, you have the works of God. And so they are saying, he says, don't labor for things that will just perish, corrupt, get sick, and die. Okay? They know what he's talking about. And he says, my father has worked up till now. It's the work of God, not the work of man. The work of man was Babel. The work of man was bondage. 
You understand that? And they say, hey, we too want to do the work of God. The work of God is the work that is done in rest. That's what they're talking about. We don't want to be slaves anymore. We don't want to be under the system of the world anymore. How do we work the God work that things will endure? Because he's talking right here about don't labor, don't work for the food that perishes. Don't, don't work. He's literally, if I'm paraphrasing it for you, are you doing a job today? Are you having a marriage today? Are you having a relationship today? Are you doing something today? Don't work because it will perish. That's what he's trying to say. Don't work on those things because it's going to perish. But he says, do a work that will last. Then they ask the question, oh, we remember something that multiplied. Yes, how do we do that work? You see? And that's why Jesus comes as the Sabbath rest. He comes as the Joshua. He says, Joshua has not given you that rest, but I have. Now, I think we've done well, but I just want to close up with this one. Okay? Very, very important to see this. You see, I'm going to show you this thing that does not perish. And we have it in Psalm 1. Okay? Just jump into Psalm 1. The first Psalm. Psalms are wonderful, powerful prayers that people need to know how to use it. Th th there are secrets in these, these psalms and one day I shall teach on those secrets. But the first psalm, I'm going to go into the first psalm, okay, goes like this, okay. Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the part of the sinner, nor sits on the seat of the scornful, but it delights in the law of the Lord. Now, that word there, delight, is the same word that they can use for Eden. Eden was made in the delight of the Lord. It was garden of delight. Wow. So he's taking you back, okay? He's taking you back somewhere. Who delights in the law, and if you understand the word law, it doesn't mean like you think it means law means commandments to do and stuff like that. The, you're delighting in what God has given in his form, in his character, through his spirit. Okay? So he delights in the law of the Lord. So he's delighting in every secret mystery that comes in the Old Testament. He's, there's a delight in that law. You see that? Listen carefully. And he meditates on that law day and night. Wow. You just get it there. Okay? So there is a blessing on someone who does a meditation, a stillness, who goes in, who engages something. Okay, there is a work that can be done that will not perish. Now watch this. Why am I saying it? Because it says it here. He will be like a tree planted by the river of water that brings forth its fruit in every season. Is it there? Whose leaves shall not wither, and whatever he shall do, he will prosper. Wow. Did you just see that? That means when there's an engagement in meditation on this stuff, which is the Sabbath, okay, there is an increase, a multiplication, and an incorruptible nature that comes upon that type of thing. When I meditate on these things. Now, where, what is this guy talking about? What is someone talking about? Where is he getting this from? And we'll close with this and you'll realize it's, he's getting it from Joshua. Remember, I'm going to just give you this very fast. Joshua was a very special guy. Joshua and Jesus is the same name. Okay? Joshua, who was before Jesus, had a very special capability. Very special capability. And if you remember what Joshua could do, was what could he do? What was the famous story of Joshua? He could stop time. Oh, Joshua can stop time. Yes, he could stretch time for fun things like killing his enemies. Yes, that's right. That's why he did it. Why? Because he stretched time so he can seek out every single one of them and not even let one of them disappear. I mean, come on. Okay, surely we can stretch a bit of time and stretch a bit of money for what we want to do. Okay, I mean, it, it's not as, uh, not as wholesome as Joshua's request. <laughs> you get it. I mean, Joshua's request was, Lord, I'm going to stretch this time. I'm going, to have, I'm going to have the sun stand still. Why? Because you know I love and meditate on your word. 
And because of that, I, I know the living words. I engage with these words. I'm in the stillness of the Sabbath. And I, because I can do that, I can even destroy my enemies. And my 24-hour day will turn into a 72-hour day. My one minute will be at someone else's thousand minutes. Do you understand that? This is what God can do for you. And so you have to see that Psalm 1, okay, comes from Joshua. And so we close with this. And here it is. Okay, Joshua chapter 1. You want to see that exact psalm here? And here it is, okay? In verse 5, the Bible tells, uh, literally is telling Joshua, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and be of good courage. Is it there? For to this people you shall divide an inheritance in the land that is what your fathers. Listen carefully. Verse 8. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. Is it there? There you go. That same thing. So he's talking that that person will be like a tree planted by the rivers of living water. And that is the same chapter, listen carefully, that says this to Joshua. Verse 13. It says this. Remember the word which Moses the servant of the Lord spoke to you, saying, the Lord God is giving you rest in this land. Now, where did you get that from? Genesis, from the time of the Sabbath, that God rested. And Hebrews, we will go, we'll go into it next, maybe on Sunday and Tuesday. Hebrews says that Joshua bought rest, but Jesus has brought a greater rest than Joshua, and we've got to strive to enter into Jesus' rest. Greater than Joshua's rest. Joshua's rest was like when he fought wars, he could stretch time. Joshua's rest was like he couldn't see giants, but he saw them as food. This is all Joshua's rest. His mindset was different. They said there was a new spirit on Joshua. Come on, guys. We are called into a rest, and that rest is extremely supernatural. You've never seen anything like Joshua. If you saw what Joshua did, we are called into a greater rest than Joshua. Joshua slaughtered thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Thousands. Kings. He fought something like 32 kings or 40 kings or 50 kings. I can't remember how many. 50 kings. He conquered and he conquered and he conquered and he conquered. And God gave him the Sabbath. The sign between Joshua and him was the Sabbath. Okay. The sign between you and God should be the same mystical Sabbath. But how does it come? Meditate. Meditate. And we're going to go into it deeper next time. The Sabbath day is the time where you are in a contemplative, meditative rest. You've found the stillness of God. That means the spirit of God. You are in the spirit. And from that spirit, you are creating the world from that place of rest. You can conquer. You can win. You can, uh, you can increase. You can do all that in a place called rest. God is calling you to a greater rest than Joshua and to, for you to be more than a conqueror. That means more than Joshua. I mean, the promises are big, but we need to do it in a place of stillness. I'm telling you, the world is in chaos. Why? Because the church is caused to rise at this time. The world is in absolute chaos. What a great opportunity. What a great opportunity. Everyone's looking around and say, oh, it's big problem, big problem. I don't see big problems. I see phenomenal opportunities, great opportunities. We've done the best this year, really. We've done phenomenally well this year. You know, uh, many people I know have done, like, they're doing really well this year. Many vowels who understand his word, they're doing well. They don't have corruption. They don't have destruction. They've entered into a rest of God. And you've heard those testimonies. That is available to you. And we bless you and I'll see you on Sunday. Remember tomorrow we're starting a fast. Watch these pages. I'll be speaking on these pages. We are going to have an awesome time together. Bless you guys and I'll see you guys on Sunday.